on the 29th of March, we got an hour-long live stream for the Anno 1800 team showcasing Season 4, including real gameplay. I made a video last week covering at high level the big announcements, like the topics of each of the three DLCs. Don't hesitate to check the video description or on my channel after watching this if you want to see it, or a lot of other Anno 1800 content. I also made a video with everything you need to know about the first of those DLC, DLC number 10, which is launching next week. I'm also considering making a video tomorrow or the day after on what you should do to prepare for this launch next week. Tell me in the comments if you're interested. But today we will focus exclusively on the new scenario. It's also coming on April 12th, but contrary to the first scenario, the hidden burning scenario we got last year, for this one you don't get it for free. You do need to buy either DLC number 10 or the season pass for season 4. Then you will definitely get it. It's called Season of Silver, where we need to establish a silver mint while contending with dramatic seasonal changes and demanding deadlines. I'm Swat Gamer, covering city building, strategy, simulation games with game reviews, guides, let's plays. Don't hesitate to press the red button below to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Scenarios were introduced late last year with the first scenario called Eden Burning. I have several videos on my channel covering what this scenario is all about and also guides on how to get the gold medal on it. Don't hesitate to do so. Basically, scenarios are something outside of the base game. You're not playing your main save or starting a new save or doing the campaign. It is something on the side that you can play at your leisure. You can actually play it many times. And as the name suggests, it comes with a scenario. It comes with a bit of a different story and also different mechanics. For this one, the story is actually after the Sunken Treasure DLC, but you don't need that DLC to play it. Don't worry about that. I won't spoil too much the actual story if you want to enjoy it. In this video, I'll talk more about what are the mechanics and what are you know, the elements of the gameplay that we know, so you can be prepared for it. The first element that I wanted to mention, because you may have missed it, is we can see the reset button here in the corner. So there's likely some interest in actually replaying it after you've lost, but maybe also after you've won, but maybe only won with the bronze medal and you want to get the gold medal. For the hidden burning scenario, the idea was you get some items and you could keep those items when you start the game. Here I didn't see any traders to get items. Maybe there's going to be a way to create those items, but we didn't see that at all. So maybe the only thing you'll be able to have when you restart is resources. You know, at, an, at the end of the game, maybe if you put resources into your ships, then you start again, maybe you get again those ships with those resources. That would, of course, give you a head start. Now, talking about the three medals, they're once again gold, silver and bronze. To get the gold one, you need to do all of the deliveries on time, because basically you'll be required from time to time to deliver some silver. So you have to do, do this on time. And you also need to have 500 tons of silver coins in storage by the end, by the final delivery. Silver is a bit easier. You don't need to have any silver coin in storage. You just need to do all of the deliveries on time. And then finally for bronze, you only need to do the final delivery. You don't need to do all of the deliveries before that one, because my understanding for all of the deliveries before, you know, you can delay them. You can say, oh, I don't have anything. I'll give you more next time. It may be impacting your productivity or something like this if you don't pay. And then we don't know exactly what the rewards will actually be. For the first scenario last time, the Indian burning scenarios, it was three ornaments with trees of different colors. In this, we don't know exactly, but it seems like for the bronze one, there is a ship here. So it could be that we get a new ship or maybe just a ship skin. To be honest, it will probably just be a skin, like a skin of La Corona, because of the story is based on La Corona. Um, even if, to be honest, I'd love to get an actual new ship. So there's some gameplay involved here. You start with $75,000 and one island. It's one island called Deserto de Prata. This will be your main island, and like in the previous scenario, every time you start it, it will probably be exactly the same. You know, it's not an island that changes every time. It will be probably exactly the same. There are three clay pits, three oil fields, five silver deposits. This could change. Maybe if you change it again, maybe you get different number of clay pits, different number of oil fields. We'll see that. And you have a few fertilities, piments, sugarcane, corn, and salpetre. That is once again quite important because actually 
you'll see other islands that have different fertilities because yes in this scenario you don't get only one island you can get three different ones you can colonize three different ones we'll talk about those ones just now on this main island you also have a number of ruins that you can destroy for resources apparently some will require workforce to remove like in the Eden burning ruins they didn't talk about it but you can see that closely if you look here I said there's two other islands you can colonize, but on the other hand, contrary to the Eden burning scenario, it seems that there's no quest islands, no islands where you can go and do something and get some resources. On the first of those two other islands, you see also three silver ore deposits, linseed, sugarcane, caoutchouc, coffee, tobacco, so many new fertilities that you didn't have on your main island, which means if you want to be able to really provide everything you need to provide to your people, you will need to settle this second island. And then the third and last island also has three silver deposits, three clay pits and three oil fields, so a lot of raw materials, but the only fertility is salpetre. And it's also worth noting that on both of these other islands, there seem to be no oasis, no water on the island itself. We're gonna talk about water just now. In terms of the overall gameplay, this is similar to the new world, but not exactly the same. What do I mean by that? Well, the two tiers of population would be the same, journaleros and obreros, but their needs are actually different. For example, for the journaleros, they need tortillas and rum as basic needs, but then they need poncho for happiness. And also the production chains are actually different. For example, the tortillas are made with sheep instead of beef. The ponchos are made with linseed. So, you know, it is similar, but different. And similarly, we are actually getting some new content like the Hacienda from DLC 10, but apparently the Hacienda will be a bit different. So we'll have to see that. From what I understand, we're getting both the normal farms and the Hacienda farms, the difference being the number of modules, but they need to be on green farmland. And the green farmland basically is near the oasis that you have on your main island, or they need to be near canals. It's a similar concept that you have in Mbesa if you've played that DLC. The canals in this case are not linked to a river, they're linked to a basin. And the basin is then providing some irrigation. Basins are monuments, you know, they need around 15 minutes from what I saw to be constructed and of course resources. So it's not like you can just place it whenever you want. And then those basins will take water during the rain season and those basins are quite key because they are linked to a completely new mechanic of two seasons there are two seasons instead of four there is the rain seasons where it rains a lot and that's where your basins are going to get full and so once again you need to make sure you have built those monuments before the rain seasons and then you have the dry season the second season the dry season where obviously it doesn't rain and basically the water that is inside your basins will slowly go down, which means that when your basins are full, they can actually provide water to a lot of canals. Uh, we don't know how many, but I think, you know, it could be something like 30, 20, I don't know, something like this, versus when they are actually at their lowest, when, you know, you're maybe almost empty in the dry season, they can only fill 10 canals, which is, of course, very few farms. So again, a completely new mechanics of two seasons that will alternate with time. We don't really exactly know how long each season will be, but I think we can talk about something like 20, 30 minutes because we saw a timer that says 19 minutes and they had been in that season for a while already. And those seasons are not just linked to this basin filling out with water. It also creates bonuses or maluses you know, that affect your city. For example, during the rain season, we know that the mines get flooded and their productivity is apparently decreased by 50%. Or that for the cyanide production, it seems to be even worse because you get a minus 100% productivity. So if I'm not mistaken, that means they completely stop. But it can also be positive effect because for example, during the dry season, the wood production is increased by 15%. In the live stream, we saw that they had one ship. It could be that you always get it. It could be that's because they won before. We don't know, but at least we know that you can also build a harbor and we can build sails. So we should be able to build more ships, likely to transport goods between our three islands, but maybe also military ships to defend ourselves. 
I don't know. Don't hesitate to tell me in the comments below if you'd be interested in some military aspect in this scenario or if like the hidden burning scenario you want it to be all about building. Now at the beginning I was talking about how to get the gold medal and that you needed to deliver everything and have some silver coins. Because this is at the core of this scenario because that new production chain to get from silver ore to coins with silver bars in the middle is core to this scenario is creating also a lot of complexity to give you some elements to unlock the silver coin production not even to make it just to unlock it you need 600 obreros so that means you at least need 600 obreros to really get there but probably more because the royal mint building to create those coins actually requires 150 obreros workforce for a two minute production cycle so we probably need several of these and that means quite a lot of obreros. On top of that, it doesn't seem to be the easiest production chain because it has nine buildings, seven buildings to get to the silver bars and then two more to get to the coins. So all in all, this scenario seems pretty interesting, some complexity, some new mechanics and definitely probably a challenge to be able to get the gold medal. So for sure, I will cover that on my channel, giving you guides and let's play on how to get to the gold medal. Don't hesitate to hit the like button so that this video is shared with more Anno fans out there and to let me know that you want to see more of this content. And I hope to see you next time.